Hello everyone, Master Zero One Zero One here. And in this video, I attempt to briefly go over some of the small features of this latest micro update for HardOps 986 underscore 18 that I found to be of importance. Usually in these update logs, I try to go over everything and explain more in depth of exactly everything that we're going for as far as the integrals of HardOps. However, lately I've realized that maybe there could be a degree of simplification in our delivery process for notifying users of what we're doing with HOPS. So, you know, maybe we could simplify it down to something like uh, UV project better now or circle good now and that will be something that will probably um, carry a little better with users instead of having to go over all the minutiae and possibly confuse people and disorient them with the product. Our goal is of course never to confuse people with what they can be doing with hard ops. Our goal is merely to inform people how to get the most out of their purchase. So throughout this video I'll be going over some of the micro features of this latest update that I found to be of importance and hopefully this will help you get the most out of this latest update to hard ops. Whenever it comes to hard ops and circle there's always been a dependency on this add-on called loop tools that's a fantastic tool that I can't recommend enough and is also built into Blender. However, it's always required that this was enabled in order to use Circle. I'm happy to announce that with this version of HardOps that if you happen to not have loop tools enabled and you attempt to perform a circle as you see me doing here, you'll still be able to perform the action by pressing Q in edit mode and going into the circle. This circle actually uses a different algorithm altogether, so it should respond completely different. However, there are some differences that are worth taking into consideration. This isn't to say that you should just not use loop tools. I'll press F4, bring up my preferences, and enable loop tools, and we can go back into the classic circle, which I feel is actually a lot faster. However, if you want to play with both of them, the tooltip has also been expanded to let you know that shift clicking will use the new circle method if you have both tools enabled, allowing you to get circles like this on the fly. And some of the added benefits is that normally circle would actually fail in scenarios like this. With alternative circle, you can actually get circles on very strange surfaces, which can get some really interesting results. So for that reason, this has been added to hard ops. So if I were to take this cube and delete it, and then go under file and choose import images as planes, we can go to my images directory and import this image as a plane. And now that we have this image in the scene, we do have the hard ops option of pressing alt V and turning on solid texture toggle to see the object as an option. And now we can actually get in here and begin modifying this shape. And so, you know, things are usually pretty hunky dory when it comes to modeling from ref, I'll start tracing around things using the knife um, rather inaccurately knowing that I can just adjust things after the fact in order to get it just the way I want. But really this is just an example for the purposes of demonstration. So we'll just jump to the end. I'm just tracing this gun. And so if I were to decide that I wanted to bevel this point everything's fine, but if I have to move these points in order to get it to go exactly where I want, things start to get a little bit trickier with my mesh. So I'm not able to get the absolute perfect result that I want by being able to model at the same time that I'm also referencing it at the same time. You know, I could just have the image behind it and be modeling a mesh like proper, but I'm determined to make it work the way that I'm showing. So for that reason, UV Project has also received an improvement this version. So I'll just shift A, add a plane. And if we go under UV project, we can hover over and look at the tool tip, which I'll take a screenshot of. And if we look at UV project, we see that control shift will allow you to load a custom grid image. And so we're gonna do that and jump to the same directory that we were in before. Maybe uh, recall my clipboard and we'll just bring up that same image and now we've added it via a UV project modifier. And so you may be thinking, why even bother doing this when you could have done it the way you were showing previously? In that case, I don't think you were paying very much attention, but continuing, we will uh, go into knife and press K and just perform the same actions. However, this time, just know, you know, spoiler alert, that I'll be able to do everything that I endeavored to do with this without the mesh getting all wonky when I make movement. And that's because there's a modifier projecting it, allowing me to basically have my way with this mesh the way that I need to in order to get this completed. So 
we're just jumping this up and I'll just join the points there and really we don't even need the background anymore for this we can just get rid of it and I'm just going to press Control B in fact let's bring the background back we do want to see the image around it so now you can see I'm able to bevel things and move points around a little more accurately while still having the reference adhere to basically what we want so I just found it to be an interesting way to use the UV project modifier so I asked that it was expanded upon in this regard there's also been some additional improvements with it as well where you can now consolidate them but I just wanted to show this particular scenario in which I just have been just modeling gun handles based off of references just kind of doing a study of references themselves and how maybe we could um, make make it more handy for users to get the job done so here I am just continuing to bevel cutting things out ever so slightly and you know we're really just rushing through this at the speed of light but you know time considered how did I do for me I think you know this is enough of a gun that I can get in here and put a solidify modifier on it maybe put it before and we could just keep working in this regard I could press alt V and turn off solid texture toggle and we have the piece that we're dealing with but I just wanted to show how we've expanded on UV project to be a little bit more useful in terms of being a reference object as well of course when you add UV project it's also parented to the object so it lets you move it around a lot easier another thing about UV project I want to show before I close this section out is that uh, let's say that we have multiple cubes and each of these cubes has a UV project we select each of them in fact let's select it and shift click to put a good UV project on it I'm going to select all these empties remove it and we're just going to shift click it again and shift clicking it will put a grid material on at the same time so I'm able to scale each of these uh, triplanar empties to get different mappings for each of them However, if I wanted to consolidate these all under one, I could select each of these, then the main object, press Q, and under UV project, we also see that control clicking it will copy to the active. So that means that now all of these are consolidated under this one. We don't yet remove the empties. I felt that you know we could leave that to the users to deal with, but in fact, we want to deselect that one. And that's it in a nutshell. UV project has been expanded to allow for consolidation in addition to being able to use it for support of reference images. Traditionally, whenever a user would select their object and press Alt M and use a blank material, the material assigned would be randomly colored. As you can see here, it's just given it a unique material just based off of the clown color system that was given to us by Blender. However, under the opt-ins panel, you can now choose, uh, let's see, matte color similar to viewport and this will actually make it where whenever you go under blank material it will assign it to have the exact same color in the viewport as it does in the render and this can be helpful for a variety of reasons however sometimes i find that it makes my viewports a little sad and depressing but if we were to control click material scroll to scroll through the materials you can see that the materials being generated are actually true to the same result that i would be getting for rendering instead of something more randomly colored. So just letting you know that both blank material and material scroll now support this option in case you need to get in and quickly texture something, but you also want your viewport to have a deep, dark, monolithic look to convey what you have going on in your render. Just know that that's something that you can use the hops button to go under opt-ins to opt into if that's something that you're interested in. I'll be turning that back off, of course. Occasionally you might find yourself in a scenario similar to this. So I will take this edge and just bevel it a couple of times, just real simple bevel. And we'll just let that go. And I'm just gonna do a couple of box cuts. And we see that, you know, the shading is kind of so-so. And that's fine. This shape is rather simple. We only did give it about four or five bevel segments. So if we look at this, this is what we're looking at at this time. If we were to sharpen it, nothing changed. However, sometimes when it comes to adding additional levels of uh, detail and geometry or smoothing, that's where you would want to use subdivision. And new to this version, alt clicking subdivision will actually add a subdivision modifier at the beginning of your stack instead of at the end. So keep in mind that this mesh 
has a degree of sharpening on it and that's because in the control tilde helper under sharp options i have that specified under apply crease under my sharp options so if i press q and i sharpen it's going to calculate according to those areas so keep that in mind whenever i alt click subdivision notice that it put the modifier first in the stack instead of at the end if i were to remove this and actually just go into modifier stack and just add it at the end this is the type of result you would get you would get the result that would be expected whenever subdivision eats your ingon geometry alive so there are times where you may want to actually smooth your mesh before the booleans get to it and for that reason alt clicking subdivision will now place it first in your modifier stack Selection of Boolean is an edit mode tool that you can access in edit mode via the Q menu. It's one of our ST3 tools. However, you're also able to access it under the Boolean submenu because it is a Boolean behavior. And basically, whatever you have selected, whenever you go under uh, Selection of Boolean, it will allow you to inset, and then you can click to extrude. And then when you finish, you are left with a Boolean. Previously, if you were to change your collection to only be collection one or even disable the cutter's collection and attempt to use selection of Boolean with your cutter's collection disabled, it will result in a visual error that would make you unable to complete the operation. So thanks to the same collection overhauls that recently took place in box cutter 717, HardOps is also now able to support collections a lot better than it used to, allowing users to have their collections disabled or turned off and still be able to use tools that utilize cutter collections and their visibility in order to operate properly still to their fullest without running into issues. So just letting you know that selection of Boolean, very minor change to improve its usability, but still pretty major in the regards of making it completely usable. So UV display is a classic in hard ops. In fact, it hasn't been around for so long that most people aren't even aware that it used to be a thing. Whenever hard ops first began, there were a couple of features that I asked for that I was told were just not possible, just weren't on the table. One of them was the control tilde modifier helper that we all enjoy now. It's now a thing. Um, but there was once a time when I was told that you can't have modifiers floating in a 3D view. And I was like, but I need them. I need them floating in a 3D view. And in that same regard, I also one day wanted to have UVs displayed in the 3D view without the need for a UV image editor. So Hops Unwrap is kind of this little hack together unwrapper that we created just for the purposes of just making it through the end of the day and assisting users with getting their models out the door. However, new to this version, UV display is now back, which means that if you were to go under auto unwrap and control click it, it will actually just display the UVs and not perform an unwrapping. Meanwhile, just vanilla clicking it will perform an unwrap and display it on screen. And you can even select multiple objects and perform an auto unwrap, which will unwrap them all at the same time and use different colors per object, which I found to be a very nice touch. So with this, I'm happy to announce the return of UV display inside of Hard Ops, in addition to the new auto unwrap system that users can utilize just for showing their UVs on the fly. So if you've been using Hops, there's, it's no surprise that you can stack bevels, meaning you can press Q, you can put a bevel on a mesh, and then you can control shift click bevel to add another bevel and press X to drop that at a half bevel, basically stacking two bevels on this mesh. And because of that, you can press Control shift b and basically bring up the bevel helper, which will allow you to modify these bevels on the fly. In fact, there's a myriad of ways you can modify your bevels throughout hard ops. In fact, we can press Alt-W, jump over to hops tool, and actually grab these dots and adjust the bevel. We can even bring down the hops button, where if you have bevels present, you can use the drop down in order to deal with bevels. However, new to this update is also the ability to extend the bevel helper to deal with Boolean. So this means that you can now access it in order to get your bull shapes to show back up on the screen. Right now, I'm just using box cutter to create a few quick cuts, just stacking them up. And then we'll just use the bevel manager's Boolean portion in order to reveal these cutters. So we can go in here and actually toggle these off and on. We can click on the operation itself to change it to be a slice or a join 
or cut depending on what you want to do you can actually turn all of them off and on as far as visibility goes or you can individually allow visibility of each and every one of your cutters depending on the situation and then of course there's little tvs for you to toggle off visibility of the modifier altogether so whenever it comes to dealing with your modifiers and booleans inside of hard ops we want to make sure that there's more options than ever of course, my favorite way to scroll through booleans is to press Q and use the mod scroll toggle to basically roll through booleans in order to find the correct boolean that I want to modify. But another way is also pressing Alt W and going in the hops tool and using the dot system that shows up under control to find the hypothetical dot that represents the star system that represents your cutter. So just letting you know that there's more options than ever for you to deal with your booleans inside of hard ops using the new bevel boolean helper as well as still being able to go through bull scroll inside of the Q menu. One of my favorite parts of hard ops that I rarely get to talk about is some of the hop shapes. Under the hop shapes, you're able to bring in things like the square or diamond or honeycomb or the new circle. Circle's different than the rest of our tools. Uh, to show that, we'll bring in square, which actually has dots allowing you to adjust it. And this is because these dots are actually controlling modifiers. So if we look at the modifier stack, we can see that this grid is built up of quite a few different modifiers. However, let's uh, bring in the next shape, which is diamond. And we see that diamond is also built up of quite a few modifiers. The next one we'll bring in is honeycomb, which we also see has quite a few modifiers. I like to control shift drag the array dots in order to add more segments to the honeycomb. It's a little bit different than the rest of our shapes, but it's still a classic nonetheless. So now that you've been introduced to the classic gang, let's talk about circle. Circle is different because whenever you bring it in, it doesn't actually have any dynamic properties you're able to adjust with control, nor is it built up out of modifiers, but it is built up out of parameters that you can adjust in the F9 panel. So here we've jumped it over to be a checker pattern. We can add more divisions in it. We can adjust the vert count. We can change the radius you know we may want to lower the radius since these are little circles that'll get it to be a little more performant and then we can always just press q and put solidification on it to give it a little more depth and the reason that i bring this up is that if you hover over these and you see the tooltip it says that shift clicking these will bring them in in the form of an intersection and what this means is that if we were to select everything and delete it and just add a cube this means that we could hypothetically go inside box cutter draw box and then Alt W, switch over to Hops tool and just shift click square and it will place it inside of the Boolean region. And so this is something that users were requesting for quite a while and you know for the longest I ignored it until it finally became apparent that all it was is a matter of us placing the shape at the location and putting an intersect modifier on it in order to get it to perform this particular operation. So the pieces seem to have always been in place for it but they just were never put together. So I'm happy to announce that now users are able to deal with this inside of hard ops to their heart's content and finally they can stop writing me emails about it. But there are a few things that we still are seeking to improve with it, but it is still just a work in process. So just letting you know that if you are wanting to place shapes at the intersection point of any of your bull shapes, you are able to do that using shift click inside of hops tool on any of the grid shapes. So in closing, I want to say that the majority of the issues that you see being resolved in this version are as a result of the hops demo that was eight hours long. Uh, throughout most of that video, I was writing down lists of things that were just kind of uh, driving me crazy. So it's not that we plan on, you know, ceasing work on hops anytime soon, but we definitely want to um, get things at a stopping point for the near future so users can get acquainted with it more readily. Right here, I'm playing a little bit of Pong. Pong is one of my favorite features in hops. Just control clicking the about button will bring it up. And I even had it where scrolling will make your paddle bigger just in case you really hate losing. So I just wanted to bring it up and play a quick round just to um, have something to close this video out on. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching and keeping up with hops in these times. And I look forward to seeing you guys for the next update when we'll be talking about Super Smooth.